So I recently acquired a Chris Reeve Knives Large Sabenza 25. I wrote an article on it, took several photos, and posted it on my blog at ocabj.net outlining my thoughts and opinions of the Sabenza. But I wanted to go ahead and record a video just echoing those same sentiments that I wrote down in my blog article for people to watch or listen to on YouTube. So this Sabenza 25 is actually my very first Sabenza. I picked the 25 over the 21, which is the original slash classic version, and the 25 is like the second generation version released 25 years after the 21 was released. But of all the uh, opinions and reviews I've read online regarding people who favor the 21 over the 25, it seems those people had already owned the 21 for a long time, and therefore I think they're biased or skewed in their opinions of, of the 25. I think they're just too used to the, the the 21 to appreciate the characteristics of the 25 that make it unique or improved upon the 21. So that being said, as my first Avenza, I figured why not get the most current revision of this Avenza as my first Avenza, and then knowing full well, I'll eventually get a 21 anyway, just to have a 21. So I bought this 25 from Blade HQ. They're a very well-known, well-respected knife retailer on the internet, but they also have a store in Utah where they're based. This carbon fiber inlay model, I believe, is one of their exclusives. They're the only ones who sell the Sabenza with carbon fiber inlay, as far as I'm as far as I know. But this Sabenza 25, it's got the large blade, 3.4 inches. Uh, I say large blade because there's two sizes for Sabenzas: small, which is a 2.94 inch blade, and a uh, large, which is like 3.4 plus, around 3.4 inches. The 21 comes in both small and large, but this the Sabenza 25 is only available right now in the large, large blade. And this has carbon fiber inlays, titanium frame, frame lock design, S35VN steel, stone, stone washed finish. And I should note that this is my very first frame lock. I've uh, owned many other knives in, in the past, including these Benchmades. I have many Benchmades um, that I've acquired over the years, but these, are, these two Benchmades that I have here on the mat are my two primary EDCs or my, the knives in my EDC rotation. This 910 Striker from Benchmade is actually my very first Benchmade, bought in 98 roughly. I was in college at the time when I bought this, but this is a liner lock, and I'm very used to liner locks since most of my knives are liner locks. And I have a few Axis locks. This 470 Emissary from Benchmade is a Axis Assist, and this is a very nice knife as well. But I'm so used to these liner locks, and they're very nice. I mean, this is a tried and true lock mechanism, but having used my very first frame lock that I've owned, it's so robust and secure this lock me mechanism is just incredible and i feel full confidence in when i use this knife knowing that that frame lock is going to hold so i as as far as this um, knife is concerned i should probably go ahead and talk a lot a, a little bit about how i like it as far as the way it feels in the hand and whatnot so this the uh the handle itself some people don't like the frame as far as the finger grooves are concerned it's a little bit different from the 21 but i have no problems with these finger grooves and it fits my hand well i have smaller hands than most but i can't imagine people with larger hands won't be able to use the 25 without any issues jimping is fine i mean it's not very aggressive so I, but i still get enough purchase on the uh, back of the blade the grind of the blade is is a blend it's called their large hollow uh, large hollow grind and it's a very nice blend uh, gives a good cutting edge and it's very sharp the point is very nice uh, the clip point is is a nice design edges and beveling of everything is just well done I mean there's no issues no hot spots whatsoever these uh, the blue anodized uh, thumb and uh, our ambidextrous thumb suds are very nice to look at some people don't like the blue I personally like the look of it because it's a nice touch the clip functions pretty well I have no issues with it it's got a nice clip into the to the pants I have no problem when I use denim jeans or suit pants this clips in just just fine carbon fiber inlays are a little bit slick um, I haven't used it really when I'm sweaty yet but um it it's still nice to hold and I mainly I bought it for looks I wanted a more modern look to this and that's why I went with the carbon fiber inlays so the design itself um, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds but there's um, the 25 has what's known as a ceramic ball integrated with the lock bar into a detent so the ceramic ball drops into a detent in the blade so when you try to uh, open up the knife it takes a little bit more force because that detent needs to break loose in order to get it open and what that does is it creates a more secure lockup or closed 
a um, closed situation as far as when the knife is closed, you don't have, I mean, this issue where if you man like slightly nudge the thumb stud, it's not going to open the knife. Whereas with something like this line of lock from Benchmade, a slight nudge could get that, that blade to move open, especially in the pocket. So here I had a clip, a uh, clip up, a uh, bench made that clipped up and, uh, it's at one, one time it had slightly opened in my pocket like this. And I accidentally, or when I put my hand in my pocket, I accidentally hit that and cut my hand. So that's not going to happen or should not happen or mitigates that from happening with the Semesa 25. But what that also means is it takes a little bit more force to open up the blade. So when you flick it open, it does take the proper method of flicking open the knife. Some people complain, oh, I can't flick it open correctly. Well, what, what they're probably doing is they're not putting correct force. They're putting lateral force away from the, directly away from the, from the frame. What you need to understand is when that thumb stud travels along the, with the knife, when it opens up, it, it goes around this radius of the pivot point, the pivot screw. So you need to just put upwards upwards force to follow that natural radial motion. And so it, that's all you need to get the knife to flick open. I have no problems with that. You don't have to put a wrist flick into it, it that which creates too much force. Just open, you know, open up with your thumb. It's very easily, easy to do. As far as the fit and finish and everything is concerned, again, I mentioned the beveling and all the edges are great. There's no hot spots. Centering is correct. A lot of people have complained, oh, I, I've seen Sebenzas where they're not perfectly centered. And I will make this point, and I wrote, I posted photos and described it in my blog article. If you stare at this knife long enough, you'll look at all the correct angles and look at it square on. There is correct gap, equal gap on each side of the blade when it's closed. But when you stare out even longer, you'll see that the clip or the uh, point of the knife, the tip of the knife is actually favoring away from the frame lock side. And that's because the pressure of the frame lock is exerting the, the frame lock itself is exerting pressure on the blade when it's closed. So that is causing it to favor slightly towards the side opposite of the frame lock. That's not a big deal to me, and that's just the nature of a frame lock design. A lot of people complain about that, but I think that's just being too nitpicky. I think this is correctly centered, and you're going to find most Sebenzas are like this. Sebenzas are going to be like this. Equal spacing on each side, but you're going to see that slight favoring of the tip away from the frame lock. So, um, pricing, I should get in the pricing. The cost of this knife that I'm holding in my hands is $545. That's $545. Small Sebenzas start at $350, and I think the large starts at $410. And so a lot of people balk at the price of a Sebenza, and they say, oh, Sebenzas are too expensive. Why should I spend four or $500 for a Sebenza when I can spend the same money and get three Benchmades or three Spydercos or even four Spydercos or four Benchmades? And yes, that's true. You can get multiple knives for the cost of a single Sebenza. But I've made this point in my article, a poignant point, that I, I equate buying a Sebenza to buying a Rolex Submariner. Rolex Submariners are the iconic tool watches of our time. It is a dive watch. It is a $7,500 dive watch. $7,500 or $8,500 if you want the date. That's retail price. But a Submariner is basically a dive watch. It's a tool watch designed to go in the ocean, be used for diving, get scratched, beat up, and yet it still costs eight grand. So why would you spend eight thousand dollars when you can get a G-Shock for a hundred dollars, and it accomplishes the same thing, tells time, and is water resistant, and it'll arguably do the job just as well as your Submariner. And I would say because you're buying quality engineering, quality design, that mechanical movement in that watch, uh, incredible fit and finish, quality control, attention to detail, and a Rolex. That's what you're getting out of it. I mean, you put a Rolex Submariner next to a G-Shock you're obviously going to know that there's a lot more engineering that went into that Rolex, amazingly enough, considering you're running a mechanical movement, which tells time within, you know, you know, minus one plus six at most as far as uh, deviation in seconds per day. So I equate buying a Rolex Submariner to buying, you know, buying a Sebenza as like buying a Rolex Submariner. You're, when you buy Sebenza versus a Benchmade, you're paying for quality design. This design is very simplistic, yet robust, and purposeful. You get three screws, the pivot screw, the two backer screws, and that's it. Versus a Benchmade, which has like this 910 Striker has a pivot screw, four backer screws, not to mention the liners and three screws for the clip. This only has one screw for the clip. And so you're getting a, a very, very purposeful, well thought out design, 
well engineered when it was created and built. Incredible quality control, fit and finish, and attention to detail on this knife. And that's the same words you're gonna hear from everyone else who's actually reviewed in a, a Sabenza. And uh, I, I'm not saying anything else that's new. So that being said, I don't think I can, I can persuade anyone in buying a Sabenza if they're not already justifying it for themselves. If you're trying to justify the cost of a Sabenza, and you just can't put, you know, can't do it, then you're probably not going to do it. And I totally understand purchasing the the less expensive version of something that is still effective. I made this other point in my blog article uh, regarding Glocks. I use Glock hand, or lose, I use Glock pistols and handguns, and I also own 1911s. Not very expensive ones, but there are other 1911s out there like Wilson Combat. They're semi-production 1911s. They run for about 2000 starting. Or you can get to Nighthawk Customs at 4000 And I, I look at that and say, well, why would I spend $4,000 on a 1911 when my $500 Glock does the same thing as far as shooting is concerned? And so, yes, I totally understand that whole concept of buying the less expensive yet effective version of some product. I mean, there's this, this whole idea... Or mentality comes across in a lot of other things like cars. I mean, obviously you're not going to buy a Ferrari when you can, you can obviously buy something like a Honda Accord that'll get great gas mileage and still be reliable for 10 years plus if you take care of it without any issues. And so, so the Sabenza, again, you're just buying engineering, design, quality control, fit and finish and out of a production knife. And this is, it's well, it's well displayed when you buy this knife that the $400 is there. If you know what you're looking for and you know how it feels compared to another knife, you know that there is that, that quality in there. So I, anyway, that's nothing new. There's, that's still going to be the, the argument on online forums and amongst your peers regarding whether or not it's worth to buy Sabenza. But this is my Sabenza 25 with carbon fiber inlay. I'm going to post my review on my, the link to my review in the video description so you can read more about my review of this knife, my thoughts as well as see detailed photos of the knife and and maybe you can make more of a decision whether or not you even really want to buy the Sabenza but I do highly recommend getting at least one Sabenza as a knife owner. I'm not really a collector but I do like knives and I acquire a few here and there um, over the years and so I really wanted the Sabenza and I finally got a Sabenza but I'm definitely going to get a 21 now. Probably going to get a small just to have a small version especially for like more dressy carry maybe at church or going to weddings or like any kind of black tie affair, having a small knife would be nice to have. So I might get the 21. So that being said, um, this is my 25. It's a very beautiful knife. Again, go read my blog article, check out the photos, make your own opinion. Don't, don't think too much about the price. If you, I mean, just throw that out of your mind and just appreciate the knife for what it is. Anyway, that's my, this is my Spencer. Thanks for watching.